An update on the Impact Wrestling status of Ring of Honor World Champion Jonathan Gresham. Spoiler on a new knockout coming into Impact Wrestling. Moose wanted a custom Impact World Championship. All this and more in today's Impact Wrestling News. Hey guys, welcome back to Rest News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there is plenty of news stories to get into today. So let's start off talking about the Ring of Honor World Champion, Jonathan Gresham, who has been making several appearances recently inside in the Impact Wrestling rings, defending his Impact Wrestling, uh, his Ring of Honor rather World Championship a couple of times in Impact. And a lot of people have been talking now that, of course, there isn't technically a contract to be had with Ring of Honor and Ring of Honor release all of the talent on their roster, despite still being the ROH World Champion, What's going on with Jonathan Gresham? We know that PCO recently signed a contract with Impact Wrestling. It looks like these former Ring of Honor talents that are on the show right now, whether it's Maria Canellis, Mike Bennett, Matt Tavern, Vincent, etc., it looks like they're going to sign contracts with Impact Wrestling. Well, is the same going to happen with Jonathan Gresham? What's his status with the company? Well, Jonathan Gresham has made an impact in Impact Wrestling, lovely pun there, as the Ring of Honor World Champion. Now, Gresham has been a free agent since the week after winning the original Ring of Honor title at Final Battle last year. He got his release papers a couple of weeks after, uh, a couple of weeks before the new year. And pretty quickly, he was booked for an appearance at Impact Wrestling's Hard to Kill pay-per-view earlier on this month, defending said Ring of Honor World Championship against Chris Sabin. Now, at the subsequent television tapings, he defended the championship against Steve Macklin in a match that was very well received, according to those at the tapings. Now, according to Fightful Select, they are reporting that Gresham is backstage or has been backstage at all of the Impact Wrestling tapings since the new year, whether they were the ones at Hard to Kill, whether they were the recent ones at Florida, and he's been performing, of course, on all of them. Now, Gresham's wife, Jordan Grace, is uh, in a multi-year contract with Impact Wrestling, and she was going to push for Gresham to be around even more with the company. However, Fightful Select is reporting that he hasn't signed a contract with the company or anything like that, but... Gresham is on a per appearance deal uh, in what Fightful are reporting uh, is being reported as a good experience for both sides so far. Now, in order to uh, defend the Ring of Honor World Championship outside of Ring of Honor, Gresham has to clear that with the ROH office, of which he maintains a positive relationship with. We know that Ring of Honor are working on that relaunch, the Supercard of Honor. He's going to be defending the Ring of Honor World Championship against Bandito, the original uh, champion, etc. Um, there's going to be the Ring of Honor Hall of Fame that's been announced as well. Um, he made it clear when speaking to several outlets ahead of Terminus that he wanted to see what a reborn Ring of Honor looked like when it comes back in April before he makes his decision about if he's going to sign somewhere permanently. So as of right now, He's not signed with Impact Wrestling. He hasn't signed a contract with Impact Wrestling. He's on a per appearance deal, which as we know, and we've spoke about several times here on the channel, is nothing truly surprising because that's, um, for a lot of talents, that's the contract that Impact Wrestling gives out. It's quite, it's interesting, isn't it? Because of the amount of talents that actually appear on the Access TV broadcast, probably half of them have actual contracts of Impact Wrestling. The rest are on handshake deals, per appearance deals. I spoke about Matt Cardona. He's always the best example for this. He's been on, been on a per appearance handshake deal with Impact Wrestling for over a year. And Impact Wrestling know that especially right now he's got so much buzz about him and he's doing such great work that they know it's beneficial to have Matt Cardona around so they're happy to continue and persist with the handshake deal the same will go with Jonathan Gresham I think Impact have realized that being so flexible when it comes to contracts when it comes to talent agreements when it comes to arrangements with various wrestlers being so flexible has allowed them to really have wrestlers appear and perform on the program that maybe they wouldn't have if they were insisting on having contracts or exclusive deals so when it comes to Jonathan Gresham basically the news as I mentioned is that he's on this per appearance deal and essentially he's going to stay that way until April he as I mentioned he has said that he wants to see what the reborn and new look ring of honor looks like before he commits to anything of course he is always going to be the ring of honor world champion unless he drops the championship between now and then which I don't think is going to happen so he's building towards that match in April for the ring of honor world championship could he end up uh, signing a deal with Impact Wrestling? Absolutely. But it's not going to happen in the next three or four months. 
But as we know, when it comes to Impact Wrestling, that doesn't mean he's not going to appear on the program. If anything, because he was at the latest set of TV tapings, and I would assume he's going to continue appearing at these television tapings, given the huge Ring of Honor influence uh, on Impact Wrestling right now, whether it's the on a no more faction whether it's ian riccoboni whether it's kerry silkin whether it's you know the world champion himself jonathan gresham appearing at the events with all of that going on um jonathan gresham is going to be around i think the interesting thing and it's not really impact specific i suppose but the interesting thing of course will be what ring of honor looks like when it returns they've said it's going to be something different they're reimagining it I, I, I would assume considering they released everyone from their talent roster that they're going to be a bit of a super indie a bit of a pwg in that case you would have someone like jonathan gresham who wouldn't be signed to a deal anyway um even if and this is where impact is very very flexible even if and I suppose this is the only way, the only way that Jonathan Gresham could possibly sign a contract with Impact Wrestling between now and then is if he went, look, I'm happy to be an Impact Wrestling guy. I'm happy to work Impact Wrestling shows. I'm happy for you to have priority over my bookings. My wife works here. My experience so far has been great. I'm happy working all of these shows. But... I am still the Ring of Honor World Champion. I still want to wrestle at those Ring of Honor shows. So you have to have some kind of clause or something in there that allows me to work any Ring of Honor bookings as well. That might be the direction that they're going in. But as of right now, there's no signing on the dotted line when it comes to Jonathan Gresham and Impact Wrestling. Now, a bit of a spoiler warning, a bit of a spoiler warning ahead of our next story. Um, this comes from the latest set of TV tapings. I think it might actually be addressed tonight on Access TV. So if you don't want to be spoiled, I'll give you five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's get into the newest knockout in the knockouts division. And that is, uh, her name is Giselle Shaw, because this, uh, the most recent set of television tapings when it comes to Impact Wrestling from the Charles F. Dodge City Center in Pembroke Pines, Florida, included the debut of Progress Wrestling Women's Champion Giselle Shaw. She was revealed as the quintessential diva and was teased during this past week's, or last week rather, Impact on Access TV. Now, Shaw is trained by WWE alumni Lance Storm, and she has been a regular on the independent scene over here in the United Kingdom, working for promotions like Revolution Pro and Progress. She's also worked for the Women's of Wrestling television series as Reina DeRays. Now, in her debut match uh, in Impact Wrestling, she faces off against Lady Frost. I won't let you know the result of that match. You can probably guess. <laughs> you can probably guess. Now, during a media call last May, Shaw specified which pro wrestlers she would want to compete against in the future, including stars like Sasha Banks and Impact Wrestling's Jordan Grace. She said, quote, I'd love to see Jordan Grace come back. I'd love to step in the ring with Jordan Grace and have her come back with all of the skills and abilities she's learned since having the bout previously. Um, I think she could grace our ring again. That would be awesome. Um, she also said about wanting to face Sasha Banks in progress, which, of course, <laughs> is not going to happen. So Impact Wrestling always uh, expanding the, the knockouts division. And I think that especially recently, I mean, if you've watched the channel, you've watched any Impact Wrestling news video I've ever done. I've always been a big proponent of the knockouts and, and specifically Impact Wrestling's booking of the knockouts, their presentation of the knockouts, the fact that it's a cornerstone of the company, the fact that you'll have knockouts opening and closing the same show, the fact that you'll have knockouts in the main event of pay-per-views and television shows on a regular basis, the fact you'll have knockouts doing Iron Man matches, doing Ultimate X matches, the presentation of the knockouts really separates Impact Wrestling from the rest, especially in a time where some other companies can be criticized still in 2022 of their present of their presentation or their lack thereof of women's wrestling. I think that whilst I'm I'm happy to see on an AEW's perspective the division get better and get more television time, I still, still think there's way, way, way more of uh, a situation to go. I think that WWE, of course, and I'll still say this, and I know people disagree with this one, but I think if you are a woman's uh, female wrestler, WWE is most likely probably the place to be in terms of finances, and they do have their females main eventing pay-per-views and television shows on a regular basis, and they do have some of the best women's wrestlers in the world. Um, the issue is is that if you're not part of the four horsewomen, or you're not basically Alexa Bliss or Bianca Belair, 
you ain't getting main events. That that's their core that they only care about, um, and that's why you get people like Diana Prazo that slip through the cracks in WWE, unfortunately. So Giselle Shaw, I, again, I'm not going to profess to know a ton about her work. I'm excited to see her in Impact Wrestling. Of course, as I mentioned over here in the UK, she's been up and down the independent scene. So Impact Wrestling constantly adding to their knockouts division and at a time which it's maybe even more featured than ever, considering you've got main events, uh, pay-per-views, Texas death matches. You've also got the Knockouts champion appearing uh, in the Royal Rumble t- on Saturday, rather. So it's a great time to be part of the Knockouts division and excited to see what Giselle Shaw does in Impact Wrestling. This is a really interesting story. I really like this one because I just uh, it's one of those what-if questions. So Moose, the Impact World Champion, revealed in an interview that he pitched Impact Wrestling on a custom world championship, but it was turned down. Now, reportedly, Moose was looking for his own custom championship. Now, fans over the years have seen plenty of wrestlers get their own custom championships uh, when they win a title with the likes of John Cena spin about Steve Austin smoking skull championship uh, the rock had the Brahma boom bout, bout that never made it to television we've all we've, we've seen this over the years right while well, Moose who won the impact world championship at bound for glory actually pitched his own custom world championship but the design was turned down this is what uh, Moose had to say when he was on the Battleground podcast. He said, quote, I actually had a custom world title made. It looks exactly the same as the current one, but with a red strap. I pitched it and it got turned down. I understand why it got turned down, but hopefully in the uh, very uh, soon future, they changed their mind on it because it was a very cool looking bout. I know why it was turned down. It's one of those things where I don't want to get into the details of it, but it definitely got turned down. I understand why, but who knows? We'll see. If I keep it long enough, maybe it's something that they might change their mind on. Now, Moose, of course, is coming off a successful championship defense at Impact Wrestling's Hard to Kill, defeating W. Morrissey and Matt Cardona. Of course, he's currently scheduled to defend the championship once again against W. Morrissey at No Surrender in February. I'm a, I'm a fan of custom championships. Uh, as I mentioned, I wasn't... Like, growing up as like a kid, uh, I... I didn't mind, really. I actually didn't mind the w, John Cena's WWE Championship initially because it was a Cena thing. It bothered me when people that weren't the WWE, that weren't John Cena had that championship because that made no sense, especially when it got to the point where it didn't even spin anymore. It was just that design. Like, I just didn't get that at all. Um, but I, I, for, 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 for Cena's purposes, I thought that was fine. Like, the spinning United States Championship as a kid, I loved it. Now I look back on it and I think it's horrible. But as a kid, I loved it. And the reason they do custom championship, folks, is to sell merchandise. And that's what it does. Every time someone has a custom title, it sells merch. Wasn't massive on Edge's rated R championship, but he wanted to have something completely different. Um so I like custom championships. I used to even like it as well, you know, when the Ultimate Warrior, and he'd have the different colored straps and all that kind of stuff. I've been a fan of AEW having the different colored straps when it comes to the TNT Championship. Of course, initially you had the red. That got retired after the tragic death of Brody Lee, but you've got the black version now. I really liked Miro's version, the white strap with the green uh, little bit on there. So I don't I It's interesting because you look at that picture right there. I look at that and I look at the Impact World Championship and I think, what would that look like with a red strap? And I think it would just look cool. I mean, we don't really know what color red. And I, and I don't really understand the reason why, to be honest. Moose says in that interview and in that quote several times there, I understand why. I understand it was to, why it was turned down. I understand why. But he doesn't say why. So I don't know what reason they would have given him. Maybe... It can't be finances because Moose had it made as well. It's not a case of, oh, well, you know, we can't afford it. Well, Moose would be like, well, I've got it. I, I, I did it. I did it here, you know. And Moose, he did the same thing when it came to the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. When he was carrying that around, of course, previously he had the um, TNA World Heavyweight Championship with the black leather uh, strap, but he changed it to a white one and it looked awesome. So he's already set a precedent that that's what he likes to do when he's a champion. He's already said, actually, when I had this championship, I changed the leather strap anyway. So maybe it's a case of him, like he said in the interview, continue, continuing to persist and say, look, this is really what I want to do. I think it would look good. I don't know what shade of red it would be. Maybe it's Impact Wrestling looking at it and saying it's a bit too close to AEW's TNT Championship with the red strap and we don't really want to broach that subject. Okay, and but then I would say if I was Moose, can we change it to something else then? Can we have something different? He wants to make himself stand out. He wants his World Championship reign to stick out as well. And as I mentioned, 
It would be one thing if he'd never done it before, and they would say, well, why would you have a custom championship? You've never had one before. That's not really your style. But he has. When he was the TLA World Heavyweight Champion, he, he changed the color of the strap. So why wouldn't he do it this time around? So I don't know. I, I, like I said, I'm a fan of custom championships. So I know people have different opinions on them, but I, I, I thought it was a fascinating story, and I do hope to see, even if we don't see it on television, what it would actually look like. Maybe Moose will reveal it in the future. Um, Talking about these recent set of Impact Wrestling television tapings, and reportedly the tapings, the most recent ones in Pembroke Pines, Florida, were reportedly hit really hard by COVID-19. Now, Impact officials dealt with a, no with a number of issues related to COVID-19 at the tapings on Friday and Saturday last week, according to PW Insider. A number of talent and staff missed the tapings due to medical protocols, uh, whether it was testing positive for COVID or being in close contact with someone who had tested positive. It was noted by one Impact source that the COVID issues at the prior weekend's uh, tapings were, quote, the worst they had seen in a long time and that there were a lot of pivots and rewrites over the course of the week due to these issues. So a lot of what you are going to see on television going forward, and that's uh, in the most, from the most recent set of television tapings, wasn't the plan. They've had to pivot on a lot of things. And we spoke about the spoilers. We spoke about the results that are out there. And from what I've seen, it still looks at really strong tapings and exciting tapings. But a lot of it wasn't the plan. And that's unfortunate, I suppose. But also on the flip side of things, that's that that's that's the world we live in right now when it comes to producing television in a pandemic you're going to have to be able to be flexible and agile because these issues are going to constantly present themselves so it's unfortunate hopefully impact wrestling are remaining as um, careful as they possibly can and we'll have to see what happens uh, going forward. Finally, let's talk about the Impact Wrestling ratings from last week. Of course, it's Impact Wrestling on Access TV Day. So seven days ago, Impact aired on Access once again. And Impact Wrestling, the viewership actually rose for the second week in a row and provided a lead-in of course, to New Japan Pro Wrestling's return to Access TV as well. According to WrestleNomics, Impact Wrestling drew 126,000 viewers on Thursday, January 20. This number is actually up from the prior week, which drew 111,000 viewers. Now, the show posted a 0.03 rating in the 18 to 49 demographic, equal exactly to what last week's viewership uh, did. Uh, this was, again, Impact's highest total viewership since November 18. Now, Impact Wrestling ranked 144 in the 18 to 49 uh, among cable originals for the day, according to Show Buzz Daily. Uh, comparatively, New Japan Pro Wrestling, which returned to Access TV with a replaying of Chris Jericho and Kenny Omega's match from Wrestle Kingdom 12, was watched by 88,000 people and nearly equaled Impact in the key demo with 37,000 and viewers so impact wrestling second week in a row rises i know some people say oh oh and you only you only point out an impact wrestling struggling in the ratings you only point out when they're going down two weeks in a row they've been on the rise you've got to give them credit obviously what they're doing is helping i do think the return to uh, of new japan to access tv helped as well because people are excited about that i think the ring of honor invasion angle is helping as well i think the idea of more new japan talent is helping but they are always going to be stuck always going to be stuck. Um, Moose did another interview talking about how strong the shows were. I'm going to talk about that tomorrow, but it's true in the sense that Impact Wrestling, you would hold it up against WWE programming in terms of quality, in terms of that's an enjoyable show to watch. You'd hold it up against AEW, certainly a lot of their shows, and go, that's an enjoyable show to watch. I think everyone that tunes in to Impact Wrestling will say, it's a good show. It's been a good show for a long time, two or three years. Is every week a home run? Of course it's not. That's, that's television. But it's a good show. The biggest issue always has been with Impact Wrestling is its exposure on Access TV. It's got a ceiling. It's limited. We've seen the ceiling. It was Kenny Omega's debut episode in uh, December of 2020. The highest ever, you know, viewership number that they've done on Access TV it was like 200 and something thousand viewers. And that's the highest that it can go because that's <laughs> that's the amount of people that basically are willing to, to find impact on Access TV. It's exposure. And even during the pandemic, they were doing good numbers because people didn't know what was going to happen. But then once fans returned, spoilers returned, combine that with not being live, and combine that with Access TV being tough to find. And that's the problem. So whilst I credit Impact Wrestling and, um, and the second week in a row it's risen, it's always going to be stuck. But... What a, that this is nothing new. This is nothing new. But anyway, guys, as always, be sure to smash a like on the like button. Be sure to subscribe, bottom right-hand corner. Plenty of Impact Wrestling content coming your way, and I'll speak for you again very, very soon.
Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.